Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be taking you through all the bits you need to know for diffusion. I'm going to be doing some very crude animation skills so you can actually see what happens. Then I'm going to be putting examples in plants and I'm going to be putting examples in humans. This video is sponsored by Tuition Kit, which is a fantastic platform that you can use to schedule your revision, put all the videos you want to watch onto a calendar format to make sure you get them done in time. There is a link in the description down below. Diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. Here we have our particles. They are all clustered together. This is an area of high concentration. What we can see happening is the particles moving around in a completely random manner so that they are more spread out. So that at the end, what we end up with is an even concentration spread out around all over the place. These particles are constantly moving. Once they are spread out, they don't just stop. They keep wiggling around the whole time. Here we have an example. I've got two beakers of water and at exactly the same time, I will drop some potassium permanganate crystals into these. You can watch how the colour, the bright purple colour of the crystals moves around as the potassium permanganate, which we can see in purple, diffuses throughout the liquid. You can see the beautiful swirls that they are creating over here and the lines they are creating over here. As the movement of the hot water moves the the colour around even more. It is helping the potassium permanganate diffuse throughout the whole water. You can still see here an area of high concentration and an area of low concentration but it is becoming more evenly spread out and it will continue to over time until it is an even concentration the whole way through. Diffusion is a very important part of a wide number of biological mechanisms. It is seen in the lungs. At the very end of your airways, there are lots of little sacs that look like bunches of grapes. These are alveoli. They are surrounded by capillaries, tiny, tiny blood vessels where blood flows through. We get the diffusion of oxygen, O2, from the lungs into the blood and the fusion of CO2, carbon dioxide, from the blood into the lungs. Air has a high concentration of oxygen and a low concentration of carbon dioxide. Deoxygenated blood that we can see in blue here has a low concentration of oxygen and a high concentration of carbon dioxide. So we will see oxygen diffusing in and carbon dioxide diffusing out. The oxygen will diffuse from the lungs into the blood, whereas the carbon dioxide will diffuse from the blood into the lungs. This can then get breathed out. Diffusion also happens in plants. On the underside of a leaf, stomata open and close to control the rate of diffusion. Oxygen made in photosynthesis diffuses out. Carbon dioxide, which is needed for photosynthesis, diffuses in. And water vapour, which is needed for photosynthesis will diffuse in and out depending on the humidity outside the leaves. There are a number of factors affecting the rate of diffusion. The first one we've seen before in this video is the temperature. The potassium permanganate will diffuse faster in the hot water. The concentration gradient will also play a part. The bigger the difference, the faster the particles will diffuse, the faster they will spread out. 
and the surface area of the membrane if diffusion needs to cross a membrane. For example, in the small intestine, we need to absorb the products of digestion. A larger surface area is better as there is more space for it to cross. We can see these as the microvilli on the epithelial cells of the small intestine. There is an advantage of having a large surface area to volume ratio when we are talking about diffusion. Small things such as single celled organisms can move substances quickly. They can diffuse from the outside to the inside where they are needed in a relatively short period of time. Larger animals have a low surface area to volume ratio, meaning that it takes a very long time for the water that this elephant is drinking to get from the outside to the inside of the cells where it is going to be needed. It needs a mass transport system to help it do that. This is much less efficient than simply diffusing a very short distance. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.